Moving on now, you are of also, of course, associated with children in need because each year you take part in something called the rickshaw challenge, mm. which involves a rickshaw. Which <laughs> and I have a met, challenge. And a challenge. <laughs> yeah. How is the challenge set up, and who takes part, and how are those who take part chosen? Yeah, so it was, um, yeah, let's start with how it all began. And we were literally sat in a room banging our heads together about what we could do that would mean that we would somehow go through Britain and try and get some kind of contact with a lot of our viewers and people who were going to donate with children in need. And so we, we thought about, you know, like one of those railroad things, and you might have seen them on kind of Bugs Bunny where you were... Uh, pump the handle and then oh, you right. work your way along so we were th maybe thinking about one of those we talked about a penny farthing oh, yeah. uh, we talked about a rickshaw in there as well and we thought well actually if we get a rickshaw then we could get people on the back of it we could you know ride around for a little bit and then get them off and you know take a donation and carry mm. on and we all we thought it was going to be quite low key to start with oh right and uh so i didn't really do much training and i had a week to get i, was, I set off from edinburgh this was the idea of the first one yeah. i set off from edinburgh and i was going to cycle all the way down to london in a week oh, right. on one of these rickshaws that we'd got effectively from the middle of london one of the you know like they're kind of doing like a bit of a taxi service oh, yeah, a cycle yeah. taxi anyway it was like a scaffolding rig this thing when it turned up it was 13 and a half stone wow of metal that's heavy and I was like, oh, no, this is this is unbelievable. And we set off from Edinburgh on one of the windiest days ever. And it was like I was just cycling against a brick wall. It was so hard to move this thing. And I, the first day was 56 miles. Oh, yeah. And I thought, wow, this is unbelievable. Yeah. And I got to the end of that day, and it was I was so late by the time I got to the finish line. And then the next day, I, had to, I thought, well, I need to obviously try and get there for the live broadcast. Mm. So I'm going to set off at five o'clock the next day and I'll cycle till seven. Yeah. And I missed it again. And then the next day I was like, right, I've got to get up at half three now. <laughs> Keep oh, cycling three. to get there for seven. And I managed to get there. The miles were getting longer. Oh, yeah. And the days were getting, you know, I literally was having no sleep by the end of this week. Anyway, it had a big old impact and we raised loads and loads of money. Mm. And it was so, it was incredibly emotional to be doing it and to push yourself to the I mean I learned so much about not giving in I can't tell you doing that thing and just taking one little bit at a time and eventually if you just keep going forwards you eventually get there and so to stay calm in situations like that I learned a lot mm. and then the next year I thought well you know I've often looked at these things on television and thought it's not about celebrities doing things this is more about real people and mm. the things that they've been through and I thought is it possible to create a team of youngsters who have benefited from children in need to almost form a relay team mm. well we ummed and ahed about it and did a little tester and thought yeah this is it this is this is possible to do yeah. and so so I created Team Rickshaw and what it's become today and it's wonderful and now we're in our well coming up to our eighth year this will be the eighth time we've done it oh, right. it's raised nearly 22 million pounds wow that's a lot which is a lot of money yeah. and um, how does it feel to raise so much it's incredible actually you can't quite believe it it's more to do with the feeling of support that people want to give and want to help. And honestly, when I'm riding alongside the teams that we have each year, and they're so inspirational, the youngsters, and they tell me their stories, and we chat as we go, and we film it, and then we edit these little bits together, and all the riders' stories go out that night. Mm. And that, that's what's raising the money. It's the awareness, and it's the fact that they've overcome whatever they've gone through in their life, and they, mm. you know, they're coping with it. And I love to give them a voice and to feel that support for them and to give them the opportunity to tell their stories is what I love about it. And, mm. um, yeah, it's a very special thing. It's become a big old part of Children in Need. And now I am um, I sit on the board for Children in Need because I, I do the ramble as well with Country File, which oh, is a big yeah. old walk where we try and get all of Britain walking. Yeah. And that came because I, I wanted to give people who were coming out on the streets and to support us on the rickshaw challenge an opportunity to do something for themselves and so for a long time i've been trying to get a big old sponsored walk together oh, yeah. and it was the perfect opportunity when sitting on the board for children in need to say right let's do a big old walk and now we do that as well and that's that's yeah. the, the kind of the two biggest things that children in need do now which is mind-boggling really yeah it is it's just incredible yeah. anyway finally how would you inspire people to take part in similar challenges 
I would just say whatever you can do, it's worth giving it a go to try and help others, really. Mm. And I would say if you get an idea that's a bit quirky and a bit fun that people are going to notice and you're going to get something out of it and enjoy talking about it and doing it yourself, then I would say just go for it and Mm. do something. Because if you don't do anything, that's bad form. Yeah. So if you, you've got to do something, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. And really, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much money you're raising. Because mm. actually, with all of us, we don't really ask for much more than, you know, a pound. Mm. And that's all you need to get. But if you can get a pound from a lot of people, then it ends up like a lot of money. You don't go to one person and say, can you give me loads of money? You just go, can you give me a small amount? Yeah. And then we'll spread the word together and mm. it'll be a big old total when we're finished. Yeah. And that's the key. Yeah, it certainly is. And that was Matt Baker there talking on the one show, two show, not the one show. <laughs> you never know, I might be on the one show one day. Good lad, that's the way. Just focus and go. Don't mess about. Yeah, I, I better start applying. So thank you for coming on to the programme, Matt. Thank you. Too. I've really enjoyed talking to you. Yeah, I've enjoyed it as well. Very conversational.